Well, so here we are at the next stop on the IndyCar Series calendar. This is Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. This is Road America, the beautiful four-mile circuit here in cow country, uh, Wisconsin. So uh, happy to be here. The, the last time I was here was 2020. It was the doubleheader, the, the COVID race. I think it was the second or third race. And, well, actually, I think it was the second and the third race of the IndyCar Series uh, in that year. And it, took place on like July 10th, which was really weird. Um, you may notice uh, there's some radicals racing in the background. I figured that would be kind of fun, but these guys are insane too, because they are like pulling over on the side of these straights and then there's no yellow flags and it's, this is an insane race. But uh, so maybe we'll see some crazy stuff in the background. I don't know. Um, but we did have first practice today for the NTT IndyCar series. Now it was a bit different first practice or Friday practice than we have seen in the last couple of road course races. There were a couple of changes. The number one change was it went from a 60 minute session to a 75 minute session. Now the concession was that if there were red flags and there were was one red flag during the session that the clock would not stop. Previously the clock stopped. Also a very interesting change and while the, why the times are a little bit more important from this session versus any other FP1 we've seen this season is that the teams were able to use the red alternate softer tires from Firestone. So without any further ado, let's take a look at the top five of today. And it was Alexander Rossi who is all of a sudden reinvigorated. Wouldn't you believe it? Uh, the guy signs a new contract and all of a sudden he's P1 after that great P2. Really probably should have been a win at Detroit. Colton Herta in second, who has been the top Andretti driver for almost two, three years now, but he's back to number two. Remember how dominant Rossi was in 2019, and of course the guy who was the closest challenger on that day was Colton Herta. Marcus Erickson, the Indianapolis 500 winner, in third on the board, and then you have Will Power, the most recent winner in IndyCar at Detroit, and he is also the points leader, which uh, when you looked at it, or when, when I was told that after Detroit, I kind of scratched my head and I said, are you kidding me? How is Power the, the points leader? But then the only bad finish he's had this year has been at the Indianapolis 500, and every other one has been in the top five this year. Alex Pelot, rounding out the top five, is the defending winner of this race. It has always been so fast here. He's got new colors this weekend with the American So one of the things in IndyCar racing that literally everyone is talking about is the silly season. And again, it's early June. And yet here we are talking about silly season and for the second week in a row, second Friday in a row, I've decided to dedicate essentially the entire Friday video to talking about some of the most recent rumors. Now, the big thing that everybody's talking about is who's gonna drive that third Aero McLaren SP car next season. I know it's not gonna be Felix Rosenquist. That's the, the thing that, that has been almost a given since I think before May, I remember I heard in, I think it was the first week of May, that Renus VK would be in the third Air McLaren SP car, and that Renus, or that Felix Rosenquist would be out at Aero McLaren SP. If I've been saying VK the entire time, Rosenquist would be out. Now what's interesting is that Rosenquist may not be totally out of McLaren. He may well be in a McLaren in Formula E next year rather than anything in IndyCar. Um, and I think that would be a bit of a shame, to be honest with you. I would rather see him in IndyCar. I think he's an IndyCar level talent. I understand that, that there are some great drivers in Formula E. Um, it, it's an internationally renowned series, and, and it may be a great opportunity for Felix, but I think it would be a shame for here in the United States. One of the other big rumors going around about that third Aero McLaren SP car has been people have been attaching uh, Alex Pillow to that seat. And every time it comes up, I, I, I ask around and I get the same answer. He's not leaving. So I don't, and, and he wouldn't have any reason to leave. That's the big thing. The only reason he would have to leave is if not only he, but Chip Ganassi got a big payday. And, and I just don't see Zach Brown paying off the, the amount of money that Chip would command for Alex Pillow. Alex Pillow is the future of IndyCar racing for Chip Ganassi racing. Who might not be. 
Scott Dixon. And it was, uh, I believe it was Tony Donahue who mentioned this as a possibility of Scott Dixon making the jump to Aero McLaren SP and taking a bit of ownership in the team in exchange for moving. Now, were Dixon to move, it would be one of the biggest moves we've seen in a very, very long time in IndyCar racing. Of course, Scott Dixon is third on the all-time win list. He's very, very close to breaking Mario Andretti's second place. And he's so young, I mean, he, he, he's not so young, but he drives like he's such a young man still. He's so competitive that let's say either Ganassi or McLaren give him that opportunity for eight, nine, 10 more years, he could very well knock AJ Foyt off as the most prolific IndyCar driver of all time. So when we're talking about a potential move for Scott Dixon, I think that's huge potential uh, news. Now, they've tried before. In fact, I think they've tried twice before to get Scott Dixon. It's not the first time we've heard this particular rumor. But I would believe it a lot more this time just because of the fact that Chip now has a worthy replacement in Alex Pillow. The other part of the Tony Donahue rumor was that Reedus VK would not be going to Aero McLaren SP because, of course, Scott Dixon would be taking that third seat. But Reedus VK would be going to Chip Ganassi Racing. Where does that leave Jimmy Johnson? Where does that leave a lot of parts and pieces? What about Tony Kanaan? He waved to the crowd at the end of the Indianapolis 500. Perhaps that was his last race because where does Kanaan go? Then you start thinking about the, the vacant A.J. Foyt seat. Who goes to A.J. Foyt Racing now that Kyle Kaiser will be moving to Andretti? Uh, Benjamin Peterson from, Indy, from the Indy Light Series has been seen at A.J. Foyt's, in A.J. Foyt's pit, in their pit box, everywhere. Everywhere you, you look, especially in the month of May, you saw Benjamin Peterson. Now, at one point, I misidentified him as Linus Lindquist because if you ever look at those two, they look almost exactly the same. A.J. Foyt is going to be doing a big test next week at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway of several drivers that are potential prospects to get in that 14 seat next year. It's anyone's guess who it could be. I don't know. I, another name I heard, I believe it was on IndyCar Radio this morning, was Santino Ferrucci. I think that could be quite interesting. The question mark I would have is, is Santino willing to sacrifice a potential really good ride at the Indy 500 for Dry and Reinbold Racing to go race with Foyt for the full season? But then again, you look at Foyt and sometimes they have great pace. I think Detroit was a great example of them really stepping up their program and Kyle Kirkwood was so, so fast at times. Uh, couldn't quite seal the deal, but he was on for a top five finish in Detroit. So I don't know. It's, it's going to be a very interesting, silly season, to say the least. And then you go, okay, Renus VK, Ed Carpenter. If Renus leaves Ed Carpenter, well, you can probably put Connor Daly in there with the Bitnile sponsorship still. But then who gets the second seat? And who gets the potential third seat? There's a third seat at Ed Carpenter Racing here this weekend because Peretta Autosport is making its return to the series with Simona Di Silvestro, the first time Simona has been on a track that is named Indianapolis uh, since 2015. So maybe the thought process might be that if Renus leaves, Peretta steps in and fills the 21 car with Simona Di Silvestro. I think that would make sense, though my source at Ed Carpenter Racing, I talked to that very, about that very possibility at Detroit, and my source there said, well, maybe, but you have to consider that, that it's not necessary. Ed doesn't necessarily want to be um, a satellite team or have someone else running the team, at least for that second car. Now, maybe Peretta could do exactly what she's doing here and hold on to that Ed Carpenter oval seat and run the road courses and maybe a fourth car at the Indy 500 for Simona Di Silvestro. So things are just completely wild in the world of Indy car racing. And they're probably going to get a little bit more wild tomorrow. Rain is expected in the forecast for qualifying. There might be some rain during the race. And as we know, uh, the aero screen in very, very heavy rain wasn't so good at Indianapolis. Now, if it's a fairly light rain, I think they'll run it. But we could have the second real test of the aero screen in the wet at a track that's a lot more unforgiving than the IMS road course. 
Outside of that, I think it's going to be a great weekend. Road America usually produces some great racing and some great finishes, and I can't wait to cover the rest of this weekend for you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this with David Land on YouTube. Subscribe for more IndyCar and motorsport content, and we'll see you in the next video.